Well, God bless you. Today, we have an opportunity to sit down with Sister Viola Yingst. Sister Viola Yingst is a member of the church here at Believers Christian Fellowship, and she had a wonderful opportunity to have many, many experiences with the Lord. And she was blessed to be one of those that was in a prayer line one time of Brother William Branham's. It was in 1963 in July at the Tabernacle, at Branham Tabernacle. And uh, you'll get to hear an audio clip of that right now, and you can hear what the, the experience our sister had. Now, not knowing you and you look real healthy, it might not be that you're here for. It might be something else. It might be some loved one. It might be uh, domestic, financial. I have no way of knowing you know that. But if he'll explain to me what you're here for, you'll know where it's the truth or not. And will the audience believe with one heart then? Yeah. Are you here? Us? It's taped and we're just standing here on a platform. The lady, I see her holding her head up like this. She's got, she has headaches that's bothering her, like migraine headaches. It's persistent headaches coming all the time. That is true. That's right. Raise up your hand. Hallelujah. Hold it. See? That's right. Another thing. She has a thyroid trouble, as she's been told, eh? <laughs> that it was bothering you. And he's right. It's a thyroid. And then you just have complications, just many things wrong with you. Nervous, upset, get flusterations, sometimes wonder where I'm standing, where I'm in or out. And that's right. It's the truth. Now, he knows you. You couldn't hide now if you had to, see? You believe you can tell me what you, who you are? Well, Viola, you return home. Jesus Christ makes you. Do you believe? Yes. Amen. That was a wonderful experience. And Sister Viola, would you just care to explain to us, share with us your life, some of the experiences you've had with the Lord? the growing up and what's happened leading up to this event and what's happened since that time you were in the prayer line. Well, when I grew up, we went to church with brethren. And when Ed and I was married, we moved out on church of brethren farm as tenants. And uh, in, in 1952, I had gone to revival meeting at uh, Brethren in Christ Church, which was just a few doors from where I grew up. And uh, I went with a friend of mine named Rhoda. And uh, I said to her afterwards, I said, well, if I'm right with the Lord, why do I get under conviction when I go to these meetings? I said, I was baptized when I was 13 and in the Church of the Brethren, three times forward. <laughs> and so that night when I got done praying, I never got under conviction again. Uh, I knew what it was to be washed whiter than snow. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit says there is therefore now no condemnation. And I could have floated all night. Amen. It was a wonderful experience. When I went back to church after that, the Holy Spirit would say, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And it would just tear my heart. And I'd tell Edwin, and he said, well, we're living on the Church of Brethren Farm. And I went one meeting, and they was arguing which was more worshipful for the docile cloth behind the pulpit to go so high or go to clear to the ceiling. And the Holy Spirit says, narrow is the way and few there be that find it. Mm -hmm. And God started calling us out and 
course, it was it was a worry on Edwin because that was our living, and I said the Bible says. The Lord owns cattle on a thousand hills. And if he owns the cattle, he owns the hills. Amen. And I know God will give us some place else if we have to move. We stayed on that farm 39 years. And so we left in the fall of 52 and someone invited us up to a holiness church. And uh, so we started, started up there in 52. I forgot to say about a dream I had. After I had my experience, I prayed for Edwin because I know he needed it too. And I had a dream of the rapture. And it was a multitude going up to this real bright light and uh, such singing and shouting you'd never heard. And I, Edwin was standing beside me and he had Paul, was about a year old, and he had Paul in his arms. And I said, well, the baby's not here. Well, Paul was the baby. And I knew God was telling me there was nothing coming. But really, what it was, Edwin would be ready for the rapture before the next one got there. Well. We'd started up to this holiness church, and we went about four Sundays, and we missed the fifth Sunday. And on Monday night, the preacher come to uh, talk to us, and he asked him if he was saved. And it put conviction on him. And so then the next Sunday, right, he went to the altar and gave his heart to the Lord. But when I had the dream, it was 13 months before David was born. Wow. When I, and, uh, when I started up there to the church, the first thing, God took the lipstick off of me. And they started dealing with me about my hair, because it was short, and I know it didn't seem like any of the other women that the Lord was dealing with them about their hair, and I was out hanging up clothes one day, arguing with him about my hair. I said, Lord, even your missionaries don't have long hair. He says, what is that to you? Follow thou me. Amen. And so it took a while. And then while we was in that church, God was laying on my heart to go to a little Pentecostal church that was there in Covington. Because there was things in that, that holiness was against. Things that I had to know to come into the message. And the one night I was there, a prophecy went forth. And it says, if you follow on to know me, I'll give you the former rain and the latter rain. And I knew that was for me, mm. that I have a promise of the latter rain. Amen. So in 53, when we was in the Holiness Church, well, it was on the radio that there were healing services in Connorsville by Brother Branham. 
Well, I had an aunt that was dying with cancer. She had already had surgery, and there was nothing they could do. But she heard this, and she wanted us to take her. To, and then also at the Holiness Church, there was one couple we knew had gone the night before, and she was called out of the service and healed of hemorrhoids. And she was telling us that. So we, uh, we took my Aunt Bertha, and she didn't get a card the first night. We didn't know how they operated. And so she wanted to go back the second night. So we went early enough to get a card. And when she started to cross the pulpit, by, uh, we had to take her on pillows in the back of the car. She just wasn't good. And so he said, would it scare you if I tell you what's wrong? And she said, no. And so he told her she had cancer and and he told her just go believing. He didn't say she was healed. But I just been saved during 52 and this. I just thought whatever I asked God, he was going to do. And I kept praying for her till several months had gone on. And uh, the one Friday morning, I got up, I couldn't eat. Saturday, I couldn't eat. And Sunday, I told Eldon, take the kids and go to church. I, I was just going to stay home and pray. So, so I, I prayed. I got to the place. I said, if you heal her now, and she has to suffer and die some other time, well, just, just take her. The fast lifted. She died in the morning. Oh, wow. But I was holding with such faith. But she never had pain. She would just say, I have an uneasy feeling. Never had to go back to the hospital or anything. So I think God had touched her. But Amen. it was her time to go. Amen. Now, I, we went to several of Brother Branham's meetings. We took an old farm couple that we were close to down at Middletown. And he said he wouldn't go again. That man could look right through him. He, <laughs> he didn't want, want to go again. So Because he felt like Brother Branham could look right through him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he, he didn't want to go. So... Th then in 63, I went up with Lee and Allison Vail and March and Ray uh, down the tabernacle. And you had to go so early. And I think they must have left at four, got down there and be a couple hours for the meeting. And Whenever the doors open, they just swarm in there and hunt a seat. And I got a seat on the back row. And I don't remember where the others sat because it was such a crowd. There wasn't enough seats for everybody. And Billy Paul gave me prayer card number one. And... So I yeah, already had that. I was having those migraine headaches going through the change. And to, I couldn't have told you what Brother Brennan preached. I was, just didn't feel good. 
at all. And he said, you don't know whether you're in or out. God would take me to that Pentecostal church to see that that was in the Word. But then he wouldn't let me go. And they, they tried to tell me I didn't have it because I hadn't spoken tongues. And so that's why he picked up. I didn't know whether I was in or out. And I know I was talking to him one day. The fellow Pentecostal church was wanting me to bring my family there. I knew God wasn't wanting me to. But I talked to him. I said, Lord, I don't understand you take me up there, but you won't let me take the family. He says, it's so you'll bleed the message. Wow, he spoke that to you. <laughs> and early in 1953, I was down and praying. There were six of us kids in the family. And they'd all went to college but me, and they all had their own homes. And we had a real cold old house there on the farm. The barn was built in 1829, and the house was built before that. Oh, wow. It was a cold old house. And he spoke to me, and he said, I won't only give you a mansion in heaven, I'll give you one here. And the next board meeting, they decided to tear down that old house, and they built a nice new brick ranch house for us. Praise the Lord. Now, I know when I was in, visited that Brethren of Christ Church, there was an old minister that I thought, oh, he would love to hear this message. He, he would get blessed in church, and he was, he was a spiritual man. And I told the Lord, I know he would believe this. And lo and behold, one day he come walking up my back walk. He'd never been to my house before. Well, I tried to talk to him about the message. And he'd been to one of Morris Sorello's meetings. If you remember, Brother Brennan mentioned Morris Sorello was a converted Jew. Well, he was all wound up on that. I didn't get any place trying to talk to him. But the Lord was showed me it's not who I think will take it. Amen. So he didn't take it. And we was in the, the Holiness Church. I was the head of the missionary department, and we had cheer sisters. And you'd draw names, and you would remember your church sister on certain times and all. And God told me he didn't like that. And he gave me a scripture in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 5, 4, I believe it was. They know not the way of the Lord or the judgments of their God. And I thought, Lord, I can't go tell him that. <laughs> and he said, I'll smooth the way before you. I'll bless you and make you a blessing. So we went to church that Sunday. And they had an altar service. And the woman went up to the altar was one that was kind of fancy dressed, a little uppish. And I 
went up to pray with her. And she said, it's been your life. It's been a testimony to me. I've been away from the Lord for 25 years. And the Lord showed me. He smoothed the way for me. Amen. He made me a blessing. Amen. And I, I had this before faith was born. I had was doctored with the Catholic doctor and and somebody had told me if there's if you have any trouble, they'll see the baby and leave the mother go. And I I was thinking about that and I had a miserable head cold and I, I said I was just sitting having a pity party. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, King Jeriah's got more faith than you got. I got my Bible and looked it up, King Jeriah's, and he told Daniel, the God that you serve continually will deliver you. Amen. So I repented of my lack of faith. Amen. And there was several families was getting dissatisfied at that holiness church, including the pastor that had just come there. And so some of us want to go to, uh, they want to build the independent tabernacle. And Edwin was put money into it, and I wanted to come to the message. And I was just praying, and the Lord says, take your hands off. And he gave me Second Chronicles 25, 6 to 9, where Judah had paid a hundred talents to the Israelites to come help them fight. And then the prophet told them they wasn't supposed to. And they said, well, how about the money? And God says, I'm able to give you more than that. Though God was telling me he could give me more than Edwin was putting it in there. And after that, my aunt passed away. And she worked at uh, Sears and had a lot of sear stock. So my share of that stock, I cashed in and got more than hid than what he was paying. Amen. And <coughs> I just had to wait till he's seen the message. Amen. And so I woke up one morning and he wasn't in bed. And I went out to look for him, and he was out writing a note to the preacher that he was resigning the teaching class and oh, wow. ready to come out. And that was in July 67. And the first, July the 1st in 67, the Lord's, I was sitting at the foot of this aunt's bed. It's different. It's a sister, the one that I took to Connorsville. Okay. Both of them died with cancer. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting at the foot of her bed And the Lord says, ask what you will. And I said, Lord, I ask for the salvation of my family. Sometimes it's not where I want to see them, but I believe they're coming. Amen. But after we come out, it was like I couldn't get a prayer through I'd try to pray. 
it went on for a couple months. And I got up from the side of the bed from trying to pray and started in the bathroom. And there was a being stood here and said, because you made me your choice, I'll show you the arm of the Lord. Amen. And so things went on. We started going up to Hillgrove with the Armstrongs and played tapes and st until some minister come through. And then in 70, I got a card. There was, they were starting little meetings, different places after the prophet was gone. And I got a card uh, from Jeffersonville said there was a meeting in West Virginia. And I had a friend, Ellen, whose mother lived down there in West Virginia. So I said, Ellen, do you think that we could go to this meeting? She said, yeah, we could stay at Mom's. And I said, I, I feel let's go to that meeting. And she was raised down in West Virginia. She knew about the hills, and this was a little white country church. And the fellow was a Pentecostal, but he got a hold of the tape, and he wanted to have a meeting. Amen. So the night before we went, I dreamed I had a little lamb. He had one leg bandaged up, and I took the other leg, and I hit it over the arm of the chair, and I broke it, and I wrapped it up. And I said, I had to do that. I told Ellen my dream. I said, what kind of dream is that? Well, we went to this brother's house the next day, and the end of the conversation talking to him, I knew what I was saying. I was breaking the word what he was standing on as a Pentecostal. Okay. And uh, we had a nice visit. So we went to the service then. And they cooked the meals in the basement. And we were down there at the table at noon. And Ellen and I was talking to a fella. And he was telling about his family, left him on account of the message. And uh, it's just talking different things. He went up to the afternoon meeting. And while the service was going on, there was a voice spoke right out of my stomach. It says, Behold, I give you your family. And I knew it was for that man. And so we was down there when they was getting uh, supper. I think of another sister and I was down there talking to him. And all at once, he stepped over in front of me. He says, Sister, I believe you have a message for me. Wow. And the Holy Spirit just swept in. I know what the third pull, it doesn't go through our mind. doesn't have anything to do with us. It's God, God speaking. Amen. And then I had in here about when I took the kids ice skating. Yeah. I don't remember what year it was. The older ones were gone, but I took the kids wanted to go ice skating because uh, 
the neighbors go ice skating on the river when it froze over. I think Evan had gone to a sale. So I told him I'd take him. And it, it was on what we call Lover's Lane that went along, little road went along the river. Well, as I was coming down, my car started to slide, and the front wheel was going off, and I hollered, Jesus, and it, it stopped. I had the back right one on the ground and the front one here, but this one was off the edge, and that one was up in the air. And when they called a wrecker to come, he kept sliding, was afraid he was going to push me on over. But the guardian angels held it till, Amen. till they got. And it just stopped it from going on over. Stopped it from going on Praise over the Lord. when I hollered for Jesus. Amen. It's good. I used to go down to Ellen, and the one week she wanted to go down to Sister Hamilton's, and Sister Hamilton had been a Pentecostal preacher, and her husband was believing the message, but she didn't know about it. And so she had taken up, a, they went to the graveyard, and she would taken a picture of Brother Brenham's grave, and it come out, it had the pillar of fire around. So she, uh, she believed after that. Amen. And she had a, a burden for one of her boys, and... She wanted us to pray. So we had a prayer meeting. I got done praying. I felt like I had to drag my car home. I never had such a feeling. And Ellen says, well, that was my dream. I dreamed I saw an airplane pulling somebody sitting in a chair going. And I said, that's what it was. I, I never had such a feeling, but if I wouldn't have had a car there, he would have took me home. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, God's blessed you mightily, sister. Huh? You've been very blessed. You've had a very blessed life. I, I have. M many people might not think... Having eight children and all the work I had to do on the farm. And but it was good. God was with you. I, I'm going to ask you a question about being in that prayer line in 1963. Because when we listened to it, Brother Brennan mentioned three things. He said you had migraine headaches and thyroid, and then you were troubled and nervous, didn't know if you were in or out. Now, could you explain those three things for us and what God did for you with those issues? Well, I never took a thyroid pill after that. Were you on medication before the meeting? Yes, yes, I was on medication. And uh, the migraines just gradually went. And uh, what else? Being in or out and being nervous. Oh, and that was because Pentecost was telling me I, I didn't have it because they were wanting me to come up there. And uh, it, was, it was a time of transitions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but God took care of all three issues. God took care of all three of those issues for you. Yeah. So you were the first person through the prayer line that day? Yeah. Now, had you ever met Brother Branham before? Did he know who you were? Well, I hadn't personally met him, but I took my aunt 10 years before. To the prayer meeting. So 
when you went through the prayer line, he didn't know your name. No. So when he called your name, that was a surprise, I'm sure. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, when you step, you had a prayer card, but you give it to the usher over at the end. Brother Branham never saw the prayer card. Okay. No, he, he wouldn't know anything about it, just what the Lord shows him. And, and it was exactly what you were dealing with. Yeah. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Well, I certainly appreciate you taking time to share your experiences, your stories with us. It's been a tremendous blessing. And uh, we're just grateful you're with us, and we had an opportunity to get it on video so we can share it with other people. Yeah. Just, just an old woman. I thought maybe God was going to take me home there before April when I had that power come. I was, you want me to say this? Yeah. I, I was sitting there in a chair. I pulled away from the computer, and I was sitting in the chair, and there was a power brushed against me. It just went sweet out a supernatural power. And my reaction, I'm going to see my husband. There was no voice with it. It's just an experience that you had. Yeah. yeah. I, and that was in April of this year. Yeah. Amen. So I, at different times, I get homesick to go. I know I've got a mansion over there. Amen. Well, we're glad that you're still with us. We love you very much. And we're glad you were able to share this with us and we could get it on a video. So God bless you, Sister Viola. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. Amen. And God bless you, friends. We appreciate you tuning in and watching this video. And we pray that it was a blessing to you. God bless you.